A stream deck and companion are essential tools for running my live streams. While I do show live demos of making buttons and things during streams, I realized I've never actually done a deep dive on how my stream deck is actually set up. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the pages on my stream deck and show you how I use them to make my live streams and video recordings. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. So this is where I normally do my live streams from. This is what you would see during the live stream, and this is what I would see during the live stream. I have my computer screen on the right, I have my multi-view on the left, I've got a teleprompter where I show chat comments so I can click on things and see what people are saying, and my stream deck is sitting over here. I'm gonna start by going through how I use a stream deck for live streams. I'll then switch to talk about how I use it for recording recorded videos. Before I get started showing you the buttons, I need to explain first how this is connected. Now I'm actually not using the Elgato software at all. While this is a Stream Deck from Elgato, it's actually running software that is made by a third party. It's actually open source free software called Companion. Companion is software that can take over the Stream Deck and you can actually use it to integrate with a bunch of different devices. I actually have the Companion software running on a Raspberry Pi that's in the rack in the back. So there's a Raspberry Pi back there and it has a long USB cable that runs to the desk up here where I have the Stream Deck. I actually also have a second Stream Deck over on the table, which I use when I'm recording videos over there. Both Stream Decks are plugged into the Raspberry Pi. This is the companion software. This is what it looks like to configure and set it up. We'll spend a little bit of time in here in, in a little bit and I can show you how to set up these buttons. And this will also be how we look at what the buttons actually are doing. Surfaces is where you can configure the actual Stream Decks. This is showing that there are two Stream Decks connected. There's also an emulator which you can use in the browser. You can load this web page up and you can use this on your phone or an iPad as well. So you can actually use Companion without a Stream Deck, but I do like having the physical buttons. You also don't need to run Companion on a Raspberry Pi. You can run it on a computer, but I prefer having it on a Pi just because it gives it its own nice little thing and I don't have to worry about if my computer crashes for some reason, it won't take down the buttons. So let's start with the home page of the Stream Deck. In Companion, you actually get a whole bunch of pages. You can make up to 99 pages on the Stream Deck. If we look at the main page, this is what we see when I actually press this button. Anytime I press the button between up and down, it'll jump me to the main page. So I use this mostly as a way to jump to other pages. Some of these pages I use frequently, some of them I don't use very often, some of them are just for testing. This show page, this is the sort of main page of my live streams. So if I press that button, it'll just jump to this page which is the main page I use during the show. I've set these buttons up with this color. This indicates these are camera angles. So these are just all different inputs on my ATEM. And then I've got a couple other buttons that I use from this, but most of the special buttons are actually on other pages. If I push this one, you'll see it just runs my little stinger that says to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and also click the bell icon. Pressing these will actually change the camera angle. So I can't do that without changing what you're gonna see on the video. And then I've got a couple other things like the iPhone overlay. If I am sharing my iPhone screen to the stream using my Apple TV, this will make my iPhone pop up in the corner with a little cute overlay. I've got two microphones that I use for the stream. One's at this desk and one is over at the table. And this is a quick way for me to make sure the right one is turned on. And I can also tap it to mute it. These two buttons are for stingers. So if I want to run a stinger during a live stream, which actually adds a chapter marker automatically, I can just push that and it'll run a stinger on top of whatever's on the program feed and come back to the program. If I wanted to transition to whatever's on the preview, I can queue up another camera on the preview, press that and it'll run a stinger and then come back to the other camera angle. So this is mostly what I'm using while I'm live. Now, before the show, I have another page which I just press the down arrow to go to the other page. And this gives me my pre-show and outro buttons along this top row. So this will load up the pre-roll, starts the countdown music, starts the timer, uh, that kind of thing. This will actually show the map on the stream. This is where we can see all the viewers coming in and where you're joining from. And when I'm ready to start the show, I'll press start at desk and that brings in, that runs a stinger and then it brings me in live, turns on the microphone and I'm ready to go. Uh, this button actually, I am, it's, it's there because it starts the show, but it starts it with the Majewell Pro Convert on the stream instead of my camera. And that's when I'm doing remote streams. So if I'm pushing video to the stream to my studio from remote and, and I'm doing a stream like, well, I'm in a hotel somewhere pushing my video feed to the studio, then that starts to stream the same way, except instead of bringing my camera and main audio online, it actually brings in the remote stream and turns on the remote audio. At the end of the show, I press credits, which which does the little translucent overlay and starts the, the credits running and the background music. I let that run for a little while, do a little outro, and then 
when I'm ready to say goodbye, I will find that button, press end animated, it runs the stinger, and the show is over. Music comes up a little bit louder, and when I'm really ready to end the stream, fade out and end stream, drops the music down, and then actually ends, stops the web presenter from actually streaming. So let's go into companion and I can show you what those buttons actually do. First, I need to go to the show page. I don't know why it's page nine. It's just been page nine for a while and I haven't moved it. So these buttons are all very simple. These are just buttons that will change what's on the program and it has a feedback to tell it to turn red if that camera is on the program. All of these buttons work the same way. It's just one action in the constellation and that just changes the camera. This is what we're showing right now, super source. That's so you can see me and the computer side by side. And you can see that it is red because super source is on the air. But all the fancy buttons where most of the show automation happens is this second page, show number two. Pre-roll, this is where we start chaining a bunch of actions together. So now you'll see that all these buttons actually do a whole bunch of different things. And this is really where the power of companion starts to show. With one button, I get to do all of these things with just one button press which would normally take either pressing a bunch of physical different devices or punching a bunch of buttons on the screen, which would be possibly in different applications. Let me give you an example. First, it's going to set the program to be the media player. It's gonna make sure that the right graphic is loaded in the media player. That already is on two different screens. That would have been this, clicking the button media player two, and going into the media tab and making sure that the thumbnail is loaded in there. So already that saved me a bunch of time. Then it's going to send a command to my graphics web page, which starts a counter at 10 minutes. It brings the downstream key on air, which is where the countdown timer actually comes from. It's coming from OBS and it will bring it on, on air. Then we do some audio mixing stuff. And this is in the rack mount audio mixer that I have. So this is instead of me doing it even in the computer interface here, this is automating pushing these buttons. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the main mix to zero, which is on. Uh, I make sure I mute the desk mic and the table microphone. I mute them on the mix that's going to the stream. Then I set the downstream key on air, key number one, which apparently is a duplicate of that. So that's funny, I can get rid of that one. Sometimes that happens, let's fix that. OBS, it actually sets the map to not visible because that is uh, the map is also loaded into OBS and that would cover up the whole stream. And then it sets downstream key three to off, which I believe three is used for, let's double check. Downstream key three is a media player, which is the map overlay. So this is gonna sit on top of the map. My little live stream is beginning shortly. Uh, when I bring the map on, but I don't want it during the first part. So all of that with just one button press. Then I let that run for a few seconds. I get ready. I watch the chat to make sure that my chat is working and the comments are coming in. People start to say where they're joining from. Then I push the map button. The map button now does a couple different things. It actually turns off the downstream key, which is used doing the overlay on top of the thumbnail because I'm actually going to set the program input to the Alter Studio, which is the, where the map is gonna be coming from. And I did that, I used to actually just have the map come sort of over top of the video. And I changed that because when it's on a downstream key, I can't do a stinger on top of the downstream key. I have to bring the map in as an actual input, and that way I can do a, a stinger over it. Anyway, you can see how complicated these things can get, and this is all just so much simpler because now I just push this one button and, and this all happens. So OBS shows the map. We've got the map overlay graphic coming in. We actually change the downstream key inputs to make sure that we've got that uh, media player graphic. And then we run the downstream key three after one second. The other cool thing about these automations is that you can actually set delays. So these are, um, with relative delays, it means that they run in sequence. So these all happen immediately because there's zero delay. Then it's gonna wait a second before it does this one. And then this one will happen six seconds after because it's five seconds after this. And that happens at the very end. So this is a way to also, these button, button presses don't have to happen all at the same time. It's a way to kind of chain these actions together with delays. Then when I'm ready to start the show, we run uh, a command on the graphics, which tells the music to stop and runs the stinger, which, uh, or sets the, sets the transition to stinger sets the preview to the desk camera, turns off the downstream keys, 
And then it actually pushes my Stinger button uh, on the Stream Deck. It's cool, you can actually make the Stream Deck buttons push other Stream Deck buttons. This is a new feature they added where it actually shows you what that button is so you can make sure that this is pointing to the right button. And then it will unmute the microphone so I can say hi and turn the map off in OBS and turn off that overlay on top of the map and the show is live. And that, again, that's all just automatic as soon as I push that button. At the end of the show, similar thing happens. This tells the graphics software to start the, the credits overlay and run the text of all the, the people's names. And at the end of the show, this is going to load my title graphic in, which is actually a, uh, that one's a still source, but Media Player 3 gets the animated transition. We set the um, I do have to run a macro for this because some of sometimes companion doesn't have actions in the atem that you can choose from these drop downs. So I made a macro that does all the right things inside the atem and I can run the macro from companion and sets the transition style to stinger and runs the stinger at the very at the very end or runs the auto transition downstream key, which runs that stinger in as a uh, as an animation. So this is how I end end the show at the very end to get that graphic coming in. Uh, on top of the screen. Also mutes my microphones, of course. This one fades out the music and actually after eight seconds will actually stop the web presenter from streaming. And that way I know I'm actually off the air. So this already, this is like the main buttons I use on my show and this is already a lot. There's a lot in there and I could do a deeper dive into how all those work, but hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea. Uh, the rest of the buttons on this page, I don't use too often. Uh, but I can show you a couple of them. So again, normally I'm on this page for the for my show, but then this one has my pre-show and outro buttons, as well as all of these. These ones down here, they used to show emojis. I don't know what happened in a, in a recent Stream Deck update. It stopped showing the emojis, which is less fun. So pushing these just gives me a quick way to load in songs in sort of in the background. It's for when I want some music for whatever is going on. I have a couple of sound effects, same idea. You can do a quick little applause and then the rest of these are kind of like buttons I don't use very often and I kind of reprogram them all the time so this oftentimes they'll be used for like a one-off show or if I need a button really quick and I know I'm going to use it during the show I'll make a new one really quick so if we look at some of these buttons you can see this one just all it does is it changes what is in box one I think I actually plugged things in differently move them around since I made this button. This is an older button. I haven't actually used it in a while, so I should probably just delete it, clean it up. Um, this one moves my computer screen to super source. Again, I'm going to delete that because I don't use them anymore. And instead, what I did is I have on the page before the show page. So these are the sort of three main pages. I made a bunch of buttons recently up here, which go and configure my super source layouts and different things. So I'll often switch between this one, which will set up Super Source 1 Box 1 to be my computer screen, which is what you're seeing right now. It sets my Box 2 as the desk camera and turns off the other boxes versus this one where I want my computer screen, but I'm sitting at the other table. So if I push that, you'll see this layout changes to the other position. And now the other camera over here is, is on the screen. And I can push that to bring it back to this layout. So this way I can very quickly configure the Super Source layouts because it just remembers everything for me. A couple other ones I use often are like if I want the uh, iPad so I can show you what's on an iPad. I want a super source with an iPad where, where the screen's a little bit cropped. Or if I'm doing things like testing out an NDI feed, I can push that. So that'll do things like bring the Mage Pro Convert into the stream as well. Uh, this one is so that I can actually show myself and the map on the stream although it's in Super Source 2, so that's ready to queue up and then I could go and do this and we can see where everybody was joining from and I can still say hi and, and you can still see me, but it's kind of fun to see the map after the intro has already started sometimes. And then again, some of these other buttons once I get down lower are things that I don't use very often. Um, I do use these two often enough that I should probably move them to a different page because I always have trouble finding them. So I should either move them to this page or I'm going back and forth between, between the two sets um, or maybe this page, I don't know. I'll think about that. Sometimes I will make buttons on this page just during a show again, because I was demoing something like this punch in. I haven't ever actually used it in like for reals, but this was the video I did a long time ago about how to make 
the punch in effect with the ATEM, it's actually a macro, so it'll just run that macro. And it theoretically should work. Let's give it a try. So what that should do is, yep, punch in and punch out. Kind of fun effect. You can check out that video on the channel if you are curious about how to do it. But I was recording the video for that and I needed to trigger the effect. And that way I can just push the button on the stream deck and there it goes. This is an important one, this multi-view button. This is actually a way for me to show you the multi-view of my ATEM on the stream without doing tunnel vision. That's the key. Because I do have, I can actually show the multi-view on the stream. It's just routed into one of the inputs on the constellation. But if I do that, then the multi-view has the program in it, which means the program has the multi-view in it and then you get the tunnel vision effect. If I show you the multi-view on the screen, if this is showing the screen, we get a copy of it there and a copy of it there, and it's really unpleasant to actually look at on while live. So what I did with this button was I had to do it in a macro because again, some of the actions weren't possible from companion, but it runs that macro and then it changes the um, other properties that I need. So what it's doing mostly is configuring the upstream key and then setting that to uh, a program input. So for this one, I take advantage of the fact that I have a multiple ME ATEM, which means that I can actually sort of use it as if it were multiple ATEMs chained together. So I set up all this stuff on ME2, which is the second one that is not on air yet. Set up these things, change ME2 inputs to the multi-view, turn on the upstream key, which is actually a copy of my camera scaled into the corner like picture in picture style that just very carefully covers that corner. And then I change ME1 to ME2. So I push this button live, hopefully it works. There it goes. Now you're seeing the multi-view of my ATEM and what's actually happening is on top of the multi-view is my camera in the corner. If I turn off upstream key two, we get the tunnel vision effect, which is not great. So instead I cover it with the, with the copy of my camera. And if I show you how this is actually configured, we'll go into upstream key two on ME2 and it is a DVE with a mask and a uh, position and size. It's scaled down to half and it's positioned at just the right spot. And if I actually go and change this while we've got the, the graphic live, you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna go back to the multi-view layout and now on my computer screen, which you can kind of see in the bottom corner of the, of the screen here, as I move this around, it's just gonna move that and I just, you know, get it, in just the right spot so that it, it covers up the corner. That way we cover up the tunnel vision with a camera. And instead of doing that live, which is not super fun, I've saved it all as a preset and I've got it in one button in Companion. So those are the main buttons that I use during a show. Now, I also wanna talk about how I use a stream deck for recording videos, like what I'm doing right now. For recording videos like this one, where I'm actually kind of recording it live, I have been using this main page of the stream deck for this video, which is kind of unusual. Normally I'm over at the table and I'm sitting at the table where I've got a couple different angles of products and I wanna do maybe less of a live to tape and more either just reading a script and then shooting B-roll or you know different ways of filming. And for those, I have different pages on the stream deck that I use. So going back to the main page, I can always jump to the main page by pushing that button no matter what page I'm on. This again is my sort of launcher screen. Before I get into the recording pages, I actually wanna first talk about this monitors button. This goes to a page where I can configure what's happening on four of the monitors on my room, in my room. I have a monitor at the table. I've got the side monitor, which is in the one at my desk in front of me here. The upper monitor is currently actually off. And then I have the teleprompter, which is at the table. And these let me, because all the monitors are actually not plugged directly into whatever they're plugged into. They're all plugged into my ATEM. I can use it as a matrix and I can change what's on them. So let me go back to show you the rear view of what I'm looking at. So this monitor is not actually plugged in directly into the ATEM. Instead, I'm gonna go to the monitors tab on my stream deck, go to the side monitor, and I can change this to other things. I can change it to the Apple TV. I can change it to ME1. I can change it to the multi-view or my other multi-view. So this lets me do things like, oh, I want to see a close up of this camera to make sure it's in focus or whatever. Or, or I can go, if I need to use my Apple TV, like uh, I'm screen sharing my iPad to it or something, I can actually use my, my screen that way. So this is a super handy thing. And I've programmed in uh, just the most common sources that I use on each monitor. 
right? So my, my table monitor is often set to the computer so I can work on a script or use, use my computer during a live stream over there. But if I wanted to be filming something where I might need to see a close up of what I'm filming, I would change it over to ME1 and now that monitor is showing a giant version of whatever is being recorded. Same with multi-view if I wanted to see all the cameras. And it's just a very quick way to bounce around and change what's on happening on all the monitors here. The other one that I do often is this TV page. This is actually kind of like the monitors page, except it's only for the TV, which is the giant TV in the back. And this is so that I can show either one of the multi views on the TV or a big version of what's being recorded or the fire TV, which is where the map is. And what that's doing as I'm pushing those buttons, that's changing what's happening on that screen. Because again, that's not plugged into any one of these devices. That's plugged into my ATEM. So I can change what's on there, whether that's a copy of whatever is on program or one of my multi views, which looks kind of fun, or the Fire TV with the map, which is what I've been doing on live streams lately. So for recording, I have a page here called Record. And this has a couple of buttons that are most useful when I'm recording a video at the table. So that has things like double check which microphone's on. And then this bottom row is actually changing just what's being what's being recorded. So these are just camera cuts. You can see I'm filming from this camera 17, which is what's filming the stream deck right now. And I don't have every camera here, obviously, I just have the most common ones. So my table camera, the side camera, uh, I have a super source and I have the overhead table. I also have ME3 on here, which I don't use terribly often, I guess. Um, and then these buttons are actually set up to tell the HyperDeX to record. And this is why this one's red right now, because I'm actually recording this video on a HyperDeX over to the network drive. So that is doing the recording right now and I can I will press start and stop on that when I'm recording. And then these are monitor buttons again. So this is what's on that monitor next to me because I sometimes I need to switch frequently without and I don't want to go to other pages. And this is a row for what's on the teleprompter and on top. So for shooting videos here at the at the table, I will usually put the computer screen on the teleprompter and put the a big copy of whatever is on program on that monitor and that way I can see what's being filmed and I can read a script from the teleprompter. When I do live streams I want the other way around. I want that monitor to be my computer screen and then I want the prompter to show me the web presenter which now I'm realizing isn't even in here probably because that's not something I do on the on this page. It's back in my it's back in my monitors page. I can change the teleprompter to web presenter status. So this one works for most of the videos. Sometimes I have a more special case. And for that, I might actually make a special page for it. Like this one, record ATEM Mini ISO. This is when I was doing a video on the ATEM Mini ISO and I needed buttons for just changing between the cameras on that. And this is changing what's on the monitor next to me. And again, I record on the HyperDeck or record on the ATEM. Another page was worth calling out here is the audio page. This is just a quick way to double check audio sources and make sure that the right ones are on or off. So desk mic, that's what I'm using right now to film this. And you can see there's lots of free space here because sometimes I don't fill up the pages. I just have the very you know purpose specific pages. For the BTS stream, remember before we start the stream, I have this separate page, which is the same pre-roll and start buttons but these buttons, I actually do the BTS stream on the ATEM Mini ISO that's on the rack back there. So this is just changing between the inputs there. This one is a special button. This is the setup routing button, which this actually makes sure that the right things are being fed into that ATEM. So if you look at the back of my rack, there's an ATEM Mini ISO up there. It's actually the SDI model. And I have four of the SDI, those four inputs are actually being fed by the constellation in the rack. So that setup routing button We'll actually go and make sure that the right things are sent to each one. So it says aux one in the constellation is ME1, aux two is the rear camera, four is the fill, which is uh, for the, the countdown timer, and I have the uh, media player set to the BTS thumbnail. I click that, I click pre-roll, and I start the stream, and then um, sometimes I will do the audio from the main, the main setup, or if I do have a wireless mic, I will put the receiver on that and then use the mic one audio here. And this lets me again quickly control just for the BTS stream, control what's going on. This button also does the actual start and stop streaming so that I can make sure I'm actually on or off the air. This is all just to say that how I use this is possibly slightly different from how you might think of, other people might think of a stream deck where I'm not using it as a 
generic tool to control any one of these devices. Like there are presets in, in here where you can create buttons and you can create them as presets for any of the devices you have connected. So like the ATEM SDI, I can go and quickly make a button that says bring camera one on air. And you can make a nice generic controller for any of the devices using the presets and going deeper and making your own as well. But I don't end up doing that because what I do is I make these specialized pages that might talk to multiple different devices at one time. The best example of that is my my show page with the pre-roll and the map and that kind of thing, where it's actually talking to like five things at once. And it's so that I get one button press and I know what's going to happen and I don't have to be hunting through pages or pressing a bunch of things all at the same time. So I know we didn't get to all the buttons in the stream deck, but that's kind of the general way that I have it set up. I have these purpose specific pages that do either something that's for a, a, a particular use, like a live stream or recording or just configuring the monitors in the room. And that way I can kind of keep it in my head of what's where and I know where to find things. And there's oftentimes free space enough to be able to create things on the fly. I will often find myself creating a Stream Deck button during a live stream because I need to control something new or I need something to work just a little bit differently than it did. And it's nice to be able to just quickly go in and set that up on the computer. I hope this video gives you some ideas of how you might use a Stream Deck with Companion as well. Links to everything, of course, are down below, including the extra long USB cables I use to make that run to the back of the rack. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.